and uh, structured, uh, yeah, in a, in a linear, linear way, you know, something that we can control, uh, measure, control, organize. Uh, in fact, the experience that we have is that it's not so linear or so uh, con controllable. And uh, even with uh, all the efforts that we can make to meet at the same time, at the right time, you know, we still fail and maybe it's a good thing. Uh, that's kind of what I want to talk about really uh, today. Um, I'm going to say uh, right away, I, I did not prepare uh, anything formal. Uh, I prepared by thinking of the topic. And the reason I, uh, I did that is because I wanted to, um, I wanted to do more than teaching. Uh, you know, I've been doing uh, trainings and lectures and teaching in academic uh, classes for uh, at least 15 years. Um, and um, there's something really uh, um, good about organizing uh, thoughts, ideas, uh, teaching in ways that are uh, linear, uh, people can uh, follow you uh, easily, uh, they know where you're going because uh, uh, you tell them where you're going um, so they can expect uh, what's going to happen, they can uh, track if you are getting uh, off track, if you are degressing, uh, they can give you feedback based on what the goal was and so on and so on and it's been my way of, uh, of thinking for a very long time with my background in behavior analysis and uh, CBT. Uh, um, I, I want to help my students, my clients uh, um, make progress and I want to be held accountable. So I tell them, okay, based on what you, what you want, what you're saying you want, we're gonna uh, set some goals and we're gonna measure uh, progress and uh, we'll see if it is working or not working. Uh, all that is great. It's great. I'm not saying uh, I'm, I'm dropping this whole uh, idea, but there can also be a, a, a trap uh, in uh, thinking that way in a too uh, rigid way, uh, to uh, be too attached to the idea that uh, things work that way, <laughs> that uh, our experience works that way, that we have a, a defined purpose that there is a, a certain way of measuring uh, if things are working and not working. Uh, and the trap is um, to miss important things because when we uh, when we have found a way to uh, when we have found a goal and we have found a way to measure uh, if we what we're doing it helps us get to that goal. There's a lot of other things that we are not paying attention to, and it's kind of the the point. It's to not get uh, distracted. Uh, you know, I. Like in, in Brazil, uh, France, uh, where I did my whole uh, education, is a, is a place where uh, psychoanalysis, a very traditional psychoanalysis, is very, very strong. And so I was educated in psychoanalysis in my first years in, the, in, the, in college, and uh, much more than behavior analysis. There's just a couple of classes in behavior analysis. Most were in, in psychoanalysis. And the thing that I rejected was this idea that uh, we just uh, go with the, the whatever the client is saying and that we we see where, where it goes and uh, we don't try to, to measure because the, uh, because psychology is not something that can be quantified and uh, I rejected that a lot because I thought well that's that's not that's not fair you can you can manipulate people you can uh, you can make them believe that uh, they are doing better but if you cannot measure if you cannot be held accountable then that's that's wrong um, so that's what drew me to behavior analysis to, to CBT. And um, at the same time, I think after, yeah, after maybe 10, 15 years of doing that and really enjoying that and having, I think, good results, I, I, found, uh, I found the limits of that too. Um, and I think it's uh, unavoidable. I think when you follow a, a line and you keep following that line, keep following that line, keep following that line, you're expecting it to take you somewhere, even if you don't think it's supposed to stop, you know, like the metaphor in act uh, to talk about values, you know, if your value was to always go toward east, there's never a, a point where you would have arrived, you know, but nobody does that in life. <laughs> nobody goes uh, start to walk and in, in a direction that's so uh, specific toward east and uh, doesn't stop. We, we always expect that something is going to, uh, 
to be there. Uh, even when we think we are not expecting anything, as soon as we're disappointed, we know that in fact we were expecting something. As soon as we get bored, uh, we're like, okay, well, that's, that's not enough. Well, but if my value is to work, is how could that not be enough? If it's really all about that, what, how, could that how could I be disappointed? How could I get bored? How could, that, how could I not be happy? So what I'm trying to highlight here is the contradiction in which we can find ourselves when we try to embrace both an idea of um, an idea of um, trying to, to choose my words really precisely here. An idea of not trying to, to control our uh, psychological life, an idea of accepting the wholeness of our experiences, uh, an idea of being in the present moment and not, uh, and not uh, over predict the future, uh, an idea of not being focused on outcomes, but focused on values. So that, that is, on one side, there's this whole idea of, I live, I live life fully, I embrace it, I, I let go of control, you know? And at the same time, this idea of uh, being scientific, experimental, evidence-based, being held accountable, assessing, uh, and so on. <laughs> and I think um, this, um, Paradox, but maybe not contradiction, but paradox, this uh, struggle is something that is um, really central to uh, the work that any uh, act therapist, any uh, contextual behavioral therapist uh, uh, will, will experience at some point if you really think of it seriously. Even if you're not thinking of it seriously, you're probably still struggling with that. You're still probably uh, struggling with um, a part of you that wants to have measure, wants to know where you're going, uh, wants to give answers to your client when they say it's not working, uh, when is it going to change? And a part of you that thinks that we should just uh, embrace the, the process and trust what's going to happen and all. And as long as it's a struggle, I'm not, attention I think is fine. I think tension is good. It creates movements, it creates uh, energy, but a ten, um, contradiction, a struggle, is not so good because usually when there's a struggle, we, we are fighting, that's the idea. We are trying to, uh, to win over, uh, we're trying to uh, um, escape, uh, to uh, ignore. So basically we are, we are fighting against the, the very idea of uh, wholeness, the very idea that, uh, of acceptance, um, of self as context. I'm using terms that are typical of act here, but. We could, we could talk about a lot of concepts that are even outside the act. Um, so, the reason why I didn't uh, prepare anything too specific is that as soon as I do that, I, um, I, I, I increase the risk of falling in the trap of wanting certain things to happen. I, I fall in the trap of uh, being uh, disappointed, of uh, or be, being afraid of disappointing. I start to perform because I want something to happen, and it's not that it's bad per se. Although in some way I, I start to feel like it. Maybe it's not good at all, but. I don't want to. I don't want to be too uh, too fast with that. With that, it's not that it's bad per se. The idea of uh, choosing a behavior, rehearsing, preparing with the idea of something is going to happen. It's more like once you start to perform, if you're still um, evaluating the goodness of your behavior based on what's going to happen as a result, then I don't think it's good actually. <laughs> I think that's where the problem starts. And it's, it's, um, it's a real mind puzzle, I think. Like I was saying, for, for a therapist uh, who wants to embrace uh, values, acceptance, and at the same time embrace evidence-based uh, therapy, it's, it's almost unresolvable. 
I think a good way of uh, resolving this issue is to uh, expose ourselves. You know, what is the, 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 the most uh, known, robust, uh, central um, um, method, process in behavioral therapy, we could argue in therapy in general, it's probably exposure, right? So I think it's important to expose ourselves to this paradox fully, to not, um, to not bargain, to not um, pretend that we're embracing the present moment, but we've prepared so much that in fact, we know exactly what's going to happen. Um, to think we're not following protocols, but still have our tricks, you know, or, or or tips and or, or rules that says I'm going to do this and then that and I know what's going to happen and um, and instead of really dropping that um, so that's what I'm doing right now and it's not comfortable I have lots of thoughts that it's uh, uh, it was a big mistake to do that that uh, they're going to be disappointed and you're going to be disappointed and all but that's what that's what I want to to experience right now in a way I mean not too much right because it would be again the trap of wanting something but that's that's sort of what i was looking uh, looking for and i and i want you to 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 experience that with me so you're not in my position you you're perhaps more likely to judge me than judge yourself right now or maybe judge yourself for wasting your time being here um but i want you to see me struggle with that um that's really something that i think is um can be useful here i want you to hear basically uh, how i'm using my uh philosophy, which I think a lot of, uh, of you share with me if you're, if you're here today, the very basics of my philosophy, functional contextualism, and how I use that to get myself not out of something, although the title of my, uh, of my um, um, talk today is uh, out of the void, but it's, in the end, it's not really out of it. It's more like uh, inside it. It's like embracing the, the void exposing yourself to the void until you realize that it is no void at all. There's no nothing. Um, so where does it start? Right? When I think of boredom, when I think of boredom, the first thing I think of is the familiarity I have with this feeling. The um, sensitivity I have. To this uh, experience, me personally, that's something that I, I I really dislike. I could almost guide my life based on I don't want to feel bored, which would not be good probably, but um, that could be a good uh, a good uh, summary in a way of uh, of uh, a big part of my motivation. Often, so I don't want to get bored, and I. I remember experiences even from when I was a, a child, you know, so that's, I'm letting my mind go there, you know, and thinking, what do I know about this experience? I, I, uh, I remember, I don't know if it's a fabricated memory, false memory, or if it's really something experienced, but I, 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 I hear myself say, I don't know what to do uh, to my mom. And, and I hear her say, well, if you don't know what to do, uh, get, take a book and, and read. I'm not sure I'm making that up, but even if I'm making that up, it's, it's pretty credible. Uh, so I'm thinking, okay, why do I remember that? What is, what is it? And, and, and how do I feel when I remember that? I'm a bit uh, angry or uh, in, in ashamed when I think of this memory. So I want to be curious about this experience here. It's interesting because starting from boredom, I was not necessarily bored, I was thinking of boredom. But when I'm bored, I can think of things like that. And in session, if I, if the client talks about boredom or if I experience boredom or it seems like nothing is happening, there's a sense of uh, going into the same story again and again. Uh, there's a lot of elaboration talking, but not much feeling, not much transformation. Or um, there is nothing, uh, silence, and it's not a silence of uh, reflection and exploration, but really more like waiting. So I, I, I can go there. I can be curious about it instead of avoiding it. As I was saying, uh, that's something that is very familiar for me to try to escape it. But if I do that, uh, usually I will do something that's not going to be very helpful. Because... Uh, 
because of what I was saying earlier, because in the end, I'm still going to, uh, to eliminate something that's there. It's, it's, the idea of acceptance is not so much that be, we need to accept because it doesn't work to avoid. That's the thing we say to, to, to try to get it in a more problem-solving way. Why would you control emotions? It's not going to work. But I think it's misleading when you think that way. To me, it's more that because it's part of you and if you try to avoid it, you're fighting yourself. And you, you can't be well if you're fighting yourself. It's, it's, it just can't work. You're going to have to uh, cut a part of you. You're going to have to ignore it or you're going to have to fight it. It's, it's just not going to work. You're going to have to, you, you, it means you drop uh, the possibility of being authentic, of being uh, true to yourself, of, uh, you drop the idea of loving yourself, you drop the idea of being loved, you drop the, the idea of loving other people. And it's, it comes down to that. As soon as you don't accept one part of you, one experience, you're already uh, feeling that, that, that dynamic. So I don't want to escape that experience of boredom whether it's for me or in, in session with clients. And so I get curious about it. Acceptance, you know, the way Steve Hayes uh, talks about it, I don't remember a quote from many years ago, he's saying acceptance is like the curiosity that a, a child has when he looks at a, a bug in a jar, you know? I like that because it's like, well, maybe you don't like it, maybe you're afraid of it, maybe something to be discussing about it, but it feels safe and it's still, you can't help but uh, looking at it. Um, Eventually, I really want to be uh, not in a jar, actually, but to, to, to be out of the jar and let it be uh, with me. Uh, so I need to be curious about it. I, I watch a, a lot of um, um, little um, TV shows for, for, for kids with my, my, my daughter. Uh, there's some that are really good that you can watch even from an early age because they teach a lot of uh, empathy and a lot of uh, social skills that are very consistent with uh, with act and stuff and um one of the things there's a show that i i watch it's um the daniel tiger i'm not sure if they translate that in portuguese or if you watch it in english but it's really, really good and they have this uh, song in the episode where um basically they teach the kids that if they're afraid of something they can uh, look at what it is and uh, be curious about it you know so like for example there's a daniel daniel, daniel the tiger someone is uh, saying yeah um, so, for example, the, Daniel is afraid of a shadow, and so he explore what is it, how you have the light that's projecting a stuffed animal on the wall, or there's a, a noise in the, in the woods, and what is it, where we're going to go, let's explore that, let's, uh, let's uh, figure out what it is. So boredom is scary. It's, for me, it's one of the worst things. I'm guessing among uh, the 250-something, uh, there are people who can resonate with that. Maybe some uh, don't, don't experience boredom as something terrifying. Uh, but for me, it is, uh, yeah, it's pretty much like dying. It's like the uh, emptiness, the absence of something, right? So if I start to get a bit curious about it, it's pretty much the same as being curious about, about death, about uh, not being there, you know, and, and being there at the same time, not having control. Um, so I can do a bit of uh, search. That's what I would do. I did it a few months ago, so I'm not going to do it uh, here live. But uh, I got interested in boredom. I started to, to look online. Uh, what's the definition of it? What's the etymology of it? Uh, what does the research say about it? And, and then I start to learn that, oh, OK, it's linked to loss of agency. Uh, you know, People will tend to be bored and angry, uh, being bored, depressed. Often it's when they feel like they're not in control of their lives, when they feel like they can't do anything about it. It's not so much. Uh, about the experience per se, that what's going on in the environment is that feeling of there's not enough stimulation, there is a sense of uh, lack of novelty, lack of growth, and uh, you feel like you can't do anything about it. So that's interesting because the loss of agency, if I think in terms of acts, for example, I'm thinking where does that fit in the model, losing uh, agency? I'm thinking self, right? Self, because self is about, I know I'm in power, I know I can, uh, okay, self, self as context, okay? 
uh, and thinking, what can I do with that? Part of me thinks, well, but self acceptance is very contemplative. There's something almost like out of um, the context of and my experiences, I welcome them. And also, it's all about letting go of control. So how can I, you know, how can I bring that together? Because if I'm bored because I feel like I don't have any action on the world and I don't have control, but then at the same time, my therapy tells me that I should let go of that. That doesn't work for me. That makes me angry. Oh, that reminds me of my mother saying, uh, why don't you get a book and read it? It feels that way. It seems it's right. And I look at my brother, three years older, and he reads and he reads and he reads, big reader. He ended up having a PhD in literature. Uh, he read thousands of, of books. Um, but that doesn't, seem, that doesn't feel appealing to me, you know? But I feel like I should. There's something wrong with me. Like there's all these books on shelves of uh, parents, and they, it's uh, it's very valued to 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 read and, and being to draw and everything. But that's not what I want, really. I want to I want I want to play soccer. I want to, I want to I want to I want to I, want to, I don't know. And I don't really know what I want. I said soccer because my my parents were judgmental about, about soccer. Um, so I, I would hide to, to watch uh, soccer, uh, to, to play soccer. Um, well, yeah, you see how it starts to, to, to resonate here. Like, of course I can't uh, have control because what I would do to take care of my boredom, I feel like I can't do it. I feel like it's not okay. I've internalized enough to the point of, I don't even know what I, what I want, what I would do. I can't even go there. I know I want to escape the void, but the problem is out of the void, there's nothing because I can't even go there. I can't even think of it. I think it's exactly the experience that we have in session when we start to feel bored. It's not that there's no uh, novelty per se, no transformation, it's that we start thinking that we can't do anything about it. I work with a lot of therapists in training consultation supervision, and it's, I don't know the percentage, but a high percentage of clients that they, that they bring to our discussions are clients with whom they are bored. They, they, they might not immediately share that feeling, but uh, if, if we dig a little bit together, it's, yeah, they say, uh, it feels like it's always the same thing. I'm dreading seeing these clients, uh, nothing is changing. So yeah, and they, they have basically, they feel powerless. They feel like they, 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 they can't change anything. The only thing they could do is terminate, uh, ref, refer this client to another. They, they actually often secretly, uh, more or less secretly, wish that the client didn't come anymore. You probably have clients like that, right? I mean, it's, it's, if you have uh, uh, just a couple of years of experience, it's, uh, it's, I'd be surprised if you don't have a, a client who is not necessarily the same profile for everybody. They, they, they don't necessarily have the same. Um, we don't have necessarily the same triggers for that, but it's that feeling that we can't do anything, and yet that that thing <laughs> keeps coming. The client keeps coming, even though nothing is changing. We don't feel like we're helping them. They are not happy. They are not saying it's great. I'm doing better and better and better. They're not happy, but they keep coming, and we don't feel like we can do anything about it. And yet we 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 stay in there, right? Um, hoping that something's going to change or not knowing what to do. So if I think from a functional contextual perspective, there's not a lot of, of um, key uh, uh, principles in, in functional contextualism. In a way, there's almost one. You could almost reduce it to one. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to list three because I think it's easier to, to, to at least talk about different facets of the, of the same thing. And you know what, I'm going to share actually a, a slide. I actually opened that PowerPoint right before we started. So you see, I, I, I got prepared a little bit. So it's a slide that I created for my students last year to uh, teach them the basics of functional contextualism in a way that's accessible to the students who don't know, uh, don't know anything about the, about functional contextualism. They, they, they didn't come to our program. It's a semester for, for therapists, uh, training therapists. They didn't come to a program specifically for CBS because there's, we are two teachers with a CBS background, but it's not the, the only thing. It's a more holistic, integrative uh, approach. 
and so they discover CBS functional contextualism for me because they they are because they take my classes, and so the it's not in specific order. We could take it in different ways, but one key element is pragmatism, right? Uh, functional contextualism is a sort of a evolution uh, from from the pragmatism of uh, William James. Um, the idea is that our um, our ideas, our beliefs, our theories are grounded in experience. They are not disconnected. They are they in, in, in a way they are one and the same thing. And I'll come back to that after. It's um, it's grounded in experience, and it's about how we interact with experience. That interaction is guided by goals, right? And this concept of pragmatism in our everyday language is usually known for that. It's uh, we are pragmatic when we are in um, connection with reality, when uh, we are we make choices that um, that work, that are based on goals. Um, and so our theories, our beliefs, whether we think in terms of the science, like RFT, uh, contextual behavior science, or in terms of uh, clients we work with, um, like the, the beliefs that they have about themselves, about life, about their emotions, the choices to make in their lives, whether a value is better than another, and so on. All these things are, in the end, evaluated based on workability, right? That's that's why so many act therapists uh, say, uh, is that working for you? Or what do you want to get out of it? Is it working? Uh, not get into the analysis so much of, uh, of thinking, but more like, how do you respond to that, to that thought? Or perhaps if you start engaging in that way of thinking, well, how, does that, how does that work? Where does it take you? Is it helpful? And so on and so on. Okay, so pragmatism. Um, already I want to I wanna see if there's a connection. It's something useful in that to deal with the sense of boredom, emptiness, and meaninglessness. Well, I don't want to say yes and no. In a way, it makes things worse because yes, because it's like okay, great. So I'm gonna have a, there's a solution there. There's a hope for a solution, right? It's a, if I think with functional contextualism, then I'm going to uh, to know what to do. <laughs> it's gonna give me a direction. But at the same time, no, because um, because I, I I still don't know where to start. Um, when I'm bored, feeling empty, it's almost like I don't have an experience. And it feels like there's nothing to start with. Of course, there's the feeling of boredom and I can explore boredom and see it. Yeah, uh, I would say yes. And that's something that we do with, we can do uh, with any feeling, uh, fear, sadness, anger, and so on. But boredom is a challenging one because it feels like nothing. It really feels like nothing. That's why we say emptiness. It's, uh, it would be very easy if it was just like, oh yeah, it's just another feeling and like, where is it in your body? And uh, you can do that. I'm not saying you can't do that. I'm saying it's a challenging feeling to uh, make concrete, to explore, because it does feel like uh, nothing. It, it does feel like, like dying, uh, at least if you're non-religious and you have you think that after death there's no, nothing in terms of consciousness or anything, or you wonder what's going to happen. And it feels like nothing. Even if you can describe it uh, in metaphors and things like that can be very helpful, of course, to, to work on that. I do it a lot. But I, I don't want to deny that it's a huge challenge because this, it, there's a really strong feeling of not feeling, of nothingness there. So it's hard to anchor a way of thinking in experience when it feels like it's just constantly escaping. You know, it feels like a, a floor that's moving, but you don't even feel it. It's just, it's more like you keep trying to find it and there's nothing, you have nothing to grasp. It's like the image that comes to mind is to be in the dark and trying to, to, to find the wall, to find the familiar uh, piece of furniture so that I can orient myself and I still can't find anything and find anything. Imagine you, that happened to you. Imagine you wake up in the middle of the night, it's dark. You, you, you get up and you try to find the familiar objects and you can't find them at first. Oh, well, I must be really uh, easy, disoriented. But then you really can't find it. And even your, your bed, you can't feel it anymore. You know, you try to find it. Wow, that sounds like the beginning of a, 
horror uh, movie or something like that, like a nightmare, basically, right? And you, you would panic probably pretty quickly. You'd probably panic pretty quickly. You'd probably start thinking, uh, I must be uh, dead, I must be uh, dreaming. Uh, you'd probably start calling if you, if you have a partner in your bedroom or whatever. You, you would want to know that there is something out there, something exists still, right? You, you might not be sure that you exist yourself because you would feel quickly like there is nothing that resonates. Even if you can hear your thoughts, you, you would, uh, I don't know how quickly it's a thought experiment, but uh, we can just find inspiration from, not inspiration, um, in knowledge from, from what's been shared by people who've been in situations like of being a hostage or in prison, you know, in isolation, in the dark for a very long time. And, Based on their histories, they don't react all the same, of course, but there is a sense of losing time, losing sense of self, not knowing anything. I mean, you, yeah, it's, it's, you need an interaction to know that you exist. That's how we develop a sense of self. So if it disappears, uh, it's a big challenge. You, if you've learned enough to interact with yourself, it can help. Uh, that's an interesting thing to notice, actually. If you can interact with yourself, good you know. Okay, so. If I can interact with myself, and I think that's the thing that people who are able to um, survive and psychologically uh, survive and then be resilient from these experiences of isolation, for example, is usually they have a very, very strong sense of self. They, they, they will tell a story like I was, every day I would, um, I would for example, uh, play uh, my favorite music in my mind or I would organize my day in certain ways so that I would not uh, lose a sense of of, of time or uh, they, they, they find strategies uh, but they cannot rely on external cues so they, they so they produce them that means that they have learned um, the ability before that to build something to to build an experience or to find it even when there is nothing to interact with themselves I'm posing a little bit because I, I feel like I'm touching on something important here. Uh, and I say it uh, with humility because, I'm, because I didn't prepare anything. I'm not telling you, listen, because I brought this and it's important, listen. I'm, I'm discovering it as I'm thinking out loud and, um, and, and with you, <laughs> listening or thinking also, probably both. So I'm posing because I feel like there's something important here. So I want to put a little mark here. Um, that one way of dealing with uh, the void boredom is to find in myself something that's that's there. Okay, okay. Part of me thinks that's trivial. That it feels like a, a meme that would be shared on Facebook, on Twitter, with a, a sunset. But part of me thinks, but if it's the case, it may also be because it's essential. Um, a lot of essential things, everything that's essential often feels trivial too, of course, because if it's essential, it's everywhere. If it's essential, it's been said before. If it's essential, it's on all cultures. It's a, if it's essential, you can see it in your kids uh, um, from the early age. Uh, so of course, it's going to feel trivial. It's going to feel unimportant. That doesn't mean it's not fundamental. So, okay. Let's, let's continue with the principle of functional contextualism. Uh, this one is a really important one, often misunderstood. And I think directly connects to what um, we were just talking about, actually. Our ontology uh, is the principle that says, basically, we don't rely on an idea of truth outside of experience. So what's often misunderstood is that it's not so much that uh, there's, I would assume that there's no experience outside of um, uh, my experience. Like for example, I see um, the face of, of Roberta here and, uh, and I know that you're there and that you have your own feelings and thoughts and everything. And if we start talking, I would hear what you're sharing. And so I, I, I assume that there are things happening that I'm not seeing, feeling right now. I, I can assume that, but it's not really outside of my experience in the end. When I assume I'm, it's still my experience, like, but everything I said is still based on my experience, uh, the fact that I'm seeing Roberta, the fact that I, 
I've talked to her before and that you know, she's real, she exists, that uh, I, I have enough information to know that she's a human being with uh, verbal skills. So, so I make assumptions in, and these assumptions are, are not contradicted by my experience. So my experience is consistent, I could say. Um, there's not really any uh, points in adding to that that it that there is something outside of my experience that really exists that I cannot uh, reach that I cannot uh, see uh, but that still validates somehow my experience like saying so it's true that there is something outside the uh, Robert has thoughts exist outside of my experience so far, the only thing I'm seeing, uh, experiencing, is my thoughts, my uh, hypothesis that uh, Robert has thoughts right now. Um, and if at some point uh, she shares her thoughts, well, it's, it will still be me hearing these thoughts. It's just no, no way of, of escaping it. Um, and why would I want to escape it? Because there's not really any, any point. But there is a, perhaps a fear that, it, that external truth doesn't exist. What's, the, what's that fear about? The fear is that that would mean maybe I'm alone, that I'm not really interacting with somebody, that uh, in fact, I'm making up for everything. Maybe I'm having uh, delusions. Maybe I, uh, I'm completely alone and uh, I have imaginary companions, not real people. Maybe right now I'm talking alone, which is maybe something that you are <laughs> thinking actually, that might is just like going and then it's not really talking to us. And, but in a way, it's always like that whether I think you're there or not, or, or I don't care. It's just, I'm talking with my experience, in fact, from this perspective of ontology anyways. So there is something appealing about it is that you don't have to, to search that external truth. You can end the search now, no, no point. You can, but you, all you're gonna find is your experience. That's going to expand, it's going to grow. But you won't find something outside because if you find something outside, it's not outside. Uh, growing, learning something doesn't mean it's outside experience. It's just that your experience is um, growing or in, it's becoming more complex and uh, transforming. But it's, uh, that's it. And at the same time, uh, a fear that there, that's all there is too. So it's relieving and it's scary at the same time. So again, I'm back to the concept of boredom, the emptiness, uh, meaninglessness, uh, what I was saying about how I would deal with like being in the dark. And at some point I said, I would, uh, I would need to, 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 um, to not completely uh, disappear in the void, I would need to stay grounded, right? That's something, the concept that we use a lot in therapy, right? I need to stay grounded. I help the client get grounded, find something that's concrete. We go with the physical stuff, right? Because it's very, it's concrete, something that can be felt uh, more easily, although sometimes it's harder because, of, because we can learn dissociation too. But we go with something that we can, that we can feel, that we can grasp. But when we can't grasp anything, when it feels like it's escaping, then where are we going to, 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 what are we going to do? So it's, I feel like there's the same tension here, wanting something outside to, to be there, to be felt, to be touched, to, be, to validate. Okay. It's the, the time of the day when there's a lot of sun coming through the window and I realize that it's harder to see. Okay. Wanting something outside to be there, to validate me, to tell me, okay, I'm still alive, right? To tell me, okay, it's, I'm making the right choice, right? Uh, I'm not alone. There's something, there's a point, right? There's a, my life uh, has meaning, right? So maybe there's something after my life, all this thing, right? We want to be validated and at the same time. Um, what a relief if, if we didn't have to ask ourselves these questions and try to find that at the same time. If we could think, you know what? I, I already have the answers because uh, no matter what I'm going to, to, 
to answer to those questions, it will still be me answering them in the end. What do I add here? We can't interact with something that is outside of our experience. Okay, so the last uh, key element functional contextualism, and again, I could have said it's the first, and I could in a way say it's all about just that. It could be, I could take one of these three and say, you know what, the others, it doesn't matter, it's the same thing in the end. But this one is particularly interesting, big monism, because it's something that's at the core of, uh, of radical behaviorism. Um, and it's still at the core of functional contextualism. We could really argue that functional contextualism is really just a, um, a clarification and expansion of the same, the same idea. Um, just like radical behaviorism was a clarification expansion of a um, method methodological, I think we say in English, I learned that in French, uh, Behaviorism, you know what's on. It's it's just like clarification and pushing the idea a little further. So monism is, yeah. There's no, uh, there's only one world, right? It's not like there's no uh, other world. Is that if there's another world, then it's 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 part of the same world in the end. Um, but it's complex and integrated, right? It's not it's not uh, monolithic, and it transforms and it changes. In boredom, when I feel bored, when I feel empty, it doesn't feel complex. It doesn't feel uh, integrated. It feels like something is missing, right? When you're bored, when you feel empty, it's, it's, you, something is missing. We say empty because it feels like we're like a container that doesn't contain anything. And we have a hard time uh, solving this issue because we don't know what to what to put in it or we don't know usually it's that we don't even know what to put in or we feel like there's no way to 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 to, to fill that that void and if i remember it's monism the thing is it's they, they there's nothing outside it feels if it feels empty okay but there's nothing outside of that That, that, that's something that can be maybe a little hard to, uh, I'm not even sure I agree with what I'm just saying here. Let's see. Because it does feel like I'm discovering things every day, learning, there's a change, so there's might be something outside, but at the same time, it's not, it's still part of the same world. Again, it seems like it's, there's nothing in what I'm saying here. And I'm watching the same reaction kind of to, to boredom. Like I just said something that is, is meaningless, as just empty. I want to almost rewind and erase, hope that you didn't hear what I said, it's stupid. I have this reaction, like it's 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 really skipping the, the fall in the void in the end. But this this it's may also be seen as that's that's the sign I'm touching in fact on the same thing here. And yet, I'm not experiencing that growth right now. It's not enough to feel like, uh, okay, I guess. It's still, um, there's a lack of vitality still. I need to feel something. I need to feel like something is, is growing. Something feels more integrated. I feel like I'm still trying to find something here. So, what I do in this kind of um, at this this stage of an exploration is that I'll just let it um, sink in, percolate. Uh, that's just phase that to me that's the phase of integration. It's not really a phase; it's happening at, at the same time all along. But if we apply a little bit of linearity, that would be a phase of integration. I've been exploring with you. I've been wondering, uh, forgetting about time. I haven't checked time in a while. I'm going to check to see uh, what I can do with the time that remains and try to have that sense of, of coherence and integration in the end. I feel like I things were connected. Even when we we're going in different directions, I was not sure where to go and all. I still feel like it's connected, at least for, for me. Uh, and, uh, and I don't, I know it will probably not be the case for you completely, but but for me it feels connected, but there is that sense now of being a bit lost. So I, 
what often happens is that I, if I have time, if I have the energy, I will continue this process of making connection. I, I'm trying to think, okay, what is uh, missing? What is contradictory? And how can we resolve this contradiction? Because integration means in the end, things are going to be all coherent, but if it's a transcend transcendental form of integration, which is what I'm looking for here, um, because I want to maintain that complexity uh, and simplicity of uh, monism, like I don't want to make my world, my, my experience uniform, I'm not going to resolve this a thing of being lost by just saying, oh, it's just your mind doing that thing or trying to just um, coordinate everything or eliminate things. No, I, I want everything to be, uh, to be complex, but I want to have a sense that everything comes together, really. And when it will be there, I will know it because, because I, I will feel uh, at peace and at the same time, I will feel a lot of energy. I will feel like something new is opening and that thing, and at the same time, we will have a feeling of, of, uh, of uh, familiarity. It's just the same as, um, you know, if you're listening to a piece of jazz and there's a phase of uh, a bit chaotic where the melody is completely lost and uh, there's a solo phase and it's like, oh, wow, it's being, becoming really hard to uh, grasp any kind of melody or where it's going and all. And at some point, things come together. Uh, there's a sense of harmony, a sense of coherence, a sense of, oh yeah, I'm catching it. And, it's, and that, that energy that you feel in that moment, that sense of, okay, I'm home. Okay, it feels familiar. And yet, it's, uh, I could not control it. It was, it was just, it's happening. And it's completely new. Uh, it's very powerful. I think we experience it almost every moment without realizing it. Sometimes it's more intense. Uh, sometimes it's very fleeting. But in a way, that's what life is about, I think. It's like constantly letting things come in and shaking our coherence and at the same time integrating them. And it's like, wow, every, every moment you really pay attention to it. I think that's what mindfulness is about in a way. Huh? It's, uh, every moment it's like, uh, wow. Wow, okay. So if I, I can either do that, really thinking, okay, how, how do all these things connect? Or I let it uh, be for a while. So I go to sleep or I think of something else. I uh, just pause, uh, go for a walk. I change the context, something like that. So maybe I will do that actually. I, so I will check the time. I yeah, have uh, just five minutes more, Matt. Five minutes, okay. Yeah. You see, it's not, I don't think it's a, coincidence five minutes okay so five minutes to uh, get to a sense of integration and the whole coherence I'm reminded of uh, something that Kelly Wilson uh, used to say and if he still says it because I haven't been in one of his workshops in a long time that it's a we're running out of time so we need to slow down uh, for a long time I thought that was a funny saying but uh, I thought it was more like a joke uh, playing with the paradox to, to just being funny. Uh, but recently, about a year ago, I, I really fully understood that, uh, no, actually it really makes a lot of sense. It makes perfect sense. I think the way I could say it simply is that when we feel like we're running out of time, it's that we are focusing on the, on the outcome and focusing on the content. We're focusing on topographies, concrete topographies. We want certain things to happen. And if we feel that way, then it's, it's time to reconnect with the process, to let go of time. So slowing down, in a way, it's using the language of, of linearity of, of time to, to, so that we can, we can come from linearity and try to get to something that's less linear. But in a way, we could say um, we are running out of time, so it's time to let go of time. So it's time to, 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 to re-engage in the, in the process. Okay, so I'm just going to take a moment to, since we only have now three minutes, to silently let all these things I've talked about sink in a little bit. And I, I invite you to do the same with the experience that you had 
listening to me during this whole time. Just let it be there like you would be. Uh... Yeah, I guess contemplating a scenery or a painting or whatever you feels right to you. But yeah, I'm gonna take about a minute here so that we still have two minutes maybe after that. Pessoal, a gente tem tempo para pelo menos duas perguntas. Alguém queria fazer? Oh, I still wanna, I still wanna add a few, few words if you don't mind. I'm still in my minute of, yes. of reflection, of silence, and then I, yes, I can take a couple of questions if you, if you want. But I just would like to, to tell you what comes out of this, this moment, so I can share that with you. Well, I guess one thing that comes out of it is, uh, the first is I, I don't have enough time. I, I would like to have more time. And, uh, and then I'm like, oh, because I'm thinking, I bet it's going to happen after. I bet it's going to happen after. When, I, when we'll be done and we'll walk. And, you know that feeling of, Oh, if only I had thought of it uh, then during that session, during that conversation, if only I had, right? It's going to happen. I know that. I know it's going to happen. So I'm, part of me is like, oh, shoot, it's going to happen. And then I'm like, but it's not really a problem. Who says that it needs to happen now? The sessions we have with clients, they, they have impacts after. We want them to have impact after, right? I mean, during it's great, but it's, it's not about the session per se, it's about the transformation for the client. So yeah, I know something's gonna happen. I know I'm going to go, I know I'm going to, I know there's gonna be a lot of uh, doubts, there's gonna be a lot of uh, temptation to, to, to be ashamed and uh, to, to forget, you know? but I know I won't do that. I know that there will be another opportunity to, to go and to explore that, I know that. So that's, that's it, that's pretty much the only thing really that, uh, that I need to learn. Uh, dealing with boredom, it's uh, emptiness. You know, it's, I'm going to grow from that. Something's going to happen. Something's going to happen, no matter what. There's nothing to worry about. You can't, because, it's, because you cannot stay alive and, and, and not be alive at the same time. When I'm bored, I get angry. But it's, that's <laughs> why, because my body, my whole self, needs to, to react against that, needs to do something about it. And that's okay. That's a way of dealing with it. We can talk to someone, you can ask your mom, what can I do? You know, grab a, grab a book, you know, it's not bad advice <laughs> after all. So, no, why not? So yeah, I guess I'll leave it there. Thank you, Matt. We have a few questions, but I, I do think that uh, the idea here is just stay with it with all you said i i see there are a lot of people feeling feeling confused feeling that they are not understanding what you said but also feeling that you said something important touching this experience of mm, i might not be understanding but something is mm. happening here and that's the great contribution that you bring to us today i think so thank you thank you i i you know um I, I'm I'm glad that you gave me this opportunity to um, to explore uh, the, together and um, yeah I, I know that everybody's gonna take something uh, disappointment anger frustration is is something yes. so I'm not worried about it uh, it's not about being liked it's not about being praised or anything it's about um, making a contribution to, uh, to 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 an experience together you know so I know you'll take something from it. Yeah. For sure. This is what the principles of our philosophies tell us, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's in our experience. Thank you. Muito obrigada, Thank you very Matt. Much. Muito obrigada. A gente precisa encerrar correndo on time para não atrasar ainda mais as outras sessões.